We gotta take him. <laughs> Welcome to the Flatlands Field and Foul Podcast. Yeah, that's very good. When the Lord your God has enlarged your territory as he promised you, and you crave meat and say, I would like some meat, then you may eat as much of it as you want. Deuteronomy 12.20 Well, hey, I'd like some meat. (laughs) I'll take some meat. I'll take... It's meat, sir. It is meat, sir. It's meat, sir. I'd appreciate some of that. Hitter, huh? Can I have some more, please? (laughs) Please, sir, can I have some more? What's that from? Uh... I don't know. I really don't know. Is that from Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe or something? I don't think so. I think it's... I don't know, it's some English... Can I have some more, please? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's a pretty crazy, uh, pretty crazy quote, though. Mm, I mean, yeah, whatever. Talking about expanding horizons, yeah, expanding territory, and uh, seeking meat in these dire times, huh? You know, <clears throat> these are some strange times, as was that Rogan would say. Yeah, yeah. You know, I am so tired of hearing the word pre- unprecedented. I know. Like it It took me about 30 seconds to realize I'm starting a petition against the word unprecedented to have it removed from the English language after this. Oh, yeah? Or, yeah, I am because I'm tired of hearing it. Okay, that's fair. Um That's fair. But so yeah, what do you what do you think of this whole thing? Like I know personally knowing if if uh proverbially proverbially shit hits the fan uh <laughs> with not enough tps or what huh no i'm I'm talking i'm proverbially i'm thinking like if you know the meats aren't available it's a little sunny in here huh i'm pulling that yeah you guys can't see this i'm pulling that rogan <laughs> the other day when he w- did the podcast with duncan trussell then he was wearing his space suit and sunglasses yeah. <laughs> be gone demons <laughs> be gone duncan's wearing a ghillie suit safety glasses and or shades and, and a and a dust mask <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Just getting that hit, that that cool cool whiskey hit, huh? Yeah, that that uh, cool I mean, water. We're not we're not you know smoking them Johns, them though. American Johns. We, we're huh? not smoking them Johns, but no. um, um, yeah, like I mean, I know for obviously us, I feel like we could survive pretty well. I looked in the freezer today, and actually, <laughs> I've all, Run a little lean, huh? I've been eating a lot of game lately, and if this thing drags out for a long time, I'm going to have to buy a bunch of beef or something. I mean, granted, I eat a lot of chicken and beef as it is and porks, but like, I like to eat the game, and I'm not going to have like two months max if I go hard. You think you got about a two-month surplus kicking around? Uh, If I'm lucky. If you were to space it out, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Well, okay. Think of it. Two months puts us in what? June. You're not. You're in not that far June. off from. You'd, you'd go about two months with with uh, without wild game. Potentially. Potentially. Not guaranteed. Not guaranteed. So you're looking forward to that hunting season, huh? I'm looking forward <laughs> to that hunting season. Get, getting that that uh, that freezer back to being topped Th- up. Thick and full. Absolutely. Speaking of hunting season, <clears throat> hang on. We uh, didn't finish our little COVID. Oh talk yeah, here. We're, yeah. The corona, the, the Wuhan coronavirus. We're talking about that bat soup. What are they? What else do they call it? They call it the 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 novel Wuhan virus. Wuhan c- corona virus. The Rona, huh? You're getting that Rona. <laughs> that Rona, <laughs> Rona hit. hit right there, Daddy. <laughs> and that and that's it. I'll tell you, I went to, I was commissioned with the task this morning to go to Wally World for some shit tickets. <laughs> Looking for, that's a hot commodity. Because at home, like, I felt like a bit of a, a we, like a, a dummy walking in for shit tickets, but to be fair, to be, to be fair, fair, to be fair, uh, we were running low at home, so do or die. <laughs> so <laughs> the leaves aren't quite here yet. <laughs> no. And they're still awful wet. Outside, and you're talking about you don't want to be losing that many socks yet. No, no, it ain't so, that dire. No, so I went to Wally World and picked up two, my two favorite things in the world. I picked up the last thirty pack of whatever white gold was on the pallet there. 
That single ply, huh? <laughs> no, no, it was. Oh, you got that trip? Oh, yeah, you triple ply, huh? It was. Wow. Hey, it was the thirty pack, and I was just taking whatever was there. Hey, it's a good deal. That's so what you, that's what you picked up for. a a big old thirty pack of that. You picked up that thirty rack. Huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> that, oh yeah. That's no Diet Millers. No, no. We're no. talking about shit tickets. This is this ain't that NASCAR soda, huh? So I picked up that. And naturally, I picked up a, some peanut butter as well to go along with it, doing the Lord's work out there, son. Let Can you tell me it. how those two things are connected in any way? I shit a lot, and I eat a lot of peanut butter. All right, fair enough. So, case in point. You know, I bought a I bought a 30 rack of that, that there, them shit tickets uh, probably six months ago. You're still working on them? I still got nine left. <laughs> I'm right. not home enough to shit, honestly. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm not, I, you know, and all honestly, this is the most I've been home in forever. And, uh, well, since probably your last uh, leg injury there, right? Over Christmas that one year? Yeah. When or I roughly tore my, Christmas tore my, time? Tore my MCL. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been, yeah, probably since then. But even then, I was still out doing things. Yeah. Here, I've been, I've been pretty good to You've stay been at milling home. around. Just, yeah, just being a, delinquent just a muppet just a complete muppet just oh but uh Friggin muppet yeah no i still got about nine rolls left so i'm you know i'm telling i'm thinking i'm probably safe for another three months all right do worst your worst case. do your worst he says yeah he says come I mean, at I'm, me bro I'm, I'm staying away from the mexican that's for sure <laughs> i'm i'm not uh i ain't testing it if you know what i mean I ain't testing the uh, the waters on uh, them, what my intestines are gonna handle. You here. ain't testing them taquerias. No sir, no sir. But yeah, what are you ain't how looking do you, for that Mexican fix? What do you what do you think about this whole whole thing? Like, where where well, do you stand? Because I feel like there's uh, uh, I think around here there's a big disconnect in it, and I don't I don't think it's hit people yet. No, um, until I want to say two weeks ago. I thought it was kind of a thing that was getting blown up out of proportion, per se. Yeah. And I thought, like everybody else that thinks around here, nothing really affects us because we live in our own little world in Southeast Manitoba. But about two weeks ago, I realized it's here and it's not good. Or you don't. It's time to take it a bit more serious. Oh, totally. And maybe it's too bad that it took me too long to realize that or think that way, but it is what it is, and now I am trying to be careful. Well, I think that's, like, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think people, especially around these parts, are very, um, I don't want to say naive. I think naive. Yeah, it would, I would, yeah, I guess maybe it's a naive, naivety, but I think, like, I think you're right in that people around here, they, you know, we live in such a very sheltered community <clears throat> that we kind of don't think anything like that's going to happen. And I mean, for me, I mean, I knew it was serious, uh, you know, when schools are shutting down and stuff like that, obviously, you know, you're, excuse me, your first, the first thing you're going to want to protect is your future generations, right? Yeah. You, uh. Nothing against the old folk, but, but they're, I would say they're a little more expendable than our future generations are. In due time, they say. Yeah. You know, hey, if the Lord's looking for them, uh, he he going to find you. He going to find you. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think, like, I don't know if you know, or if you heard uh, yesterday or today, I can't remember, they uh, the first COVID-19 death in Manitoba. Okay. Has occurred. Yeah. So yeah, I think I we're, we're, uh, we're kind of officially on the board, if you will. We're on the and map. I mean, to be fair, we, Manitoba, to be fair, to be fair, Manitoba has been very sheltered. Like we've, you know, we had and like Saskatchewan, really. We had like six cases. Well, BC and Ontario were calling state, like state of emergencies. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think it just took time to get here. Oh, and for now, sure. Now, and, and I mean, the thing is, as you start seeing more cases, you know, that web just opens up, right? Yeah. And it, it begins to trickle or drizzle, drizzle up in your hizzle. That <laughs> Snoop Dogg. That, that no. uptown in your damn town, huh? <laughs> but as, you know, as little Jimmy shows up in the common area and he's carrying this virus, whether he knows it or not, and then little Tommy and little, little Jimmy, 
you know, like yeah, everybody's picking it up. And I guess we're lucky in Manitoba and, and Sask maybe that our population is lower and the density is, it's not super dense, right? Other than Winnipeg and we're pretty widespread. Well, Regina and Saskatoon aren't really that big in comparison to Winnipeg. However, it just, it just like it's here, but it just takes a lot longer to spread in the rural community because people aren't necessarily coming in contact with people that have been away for a while, you know? No, totally. And, and, and like I think the biggest, you know, a lot of people in the rural community, the biggest trip they've took is in the last number of months is going to Winnipeg, <laughs> going to Cabela's or something, yeah, you know, yeah. going to what the delinquents are going, going to the there. feed store. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. And, and, and I totally like, I, it's not, it's not the sick people that are spreading it. It's the people that aren't showing symptoms. It's the people that are, you know, they feel fine and they're, kind of bucking the system or maybe if it maybe it is the people that are feeling symptoms and they just haven't felt them yet right well if you're feeling symptoms well, and no, haven't felt them yet <laughs> that's, no, that's I an mean, you could have it and and like the symptoms like if you as soon as you contract it you don't feel the symptoms no, that's, like, and that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying right? like it's the people that yeah. are that are asymptomatic that are spreading it because they're yeah. most of those people are telling you hey like i'm fine I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And again, I'm not saying take, you know, shut your whole life down. The reason I took the time off, um, I had contracted a stomach bug almost two weeks ago and I knew it was the flu, but with this whole thing coming out, you know, the decision was made that it would be better if I stay home and just to be safe, just to be safe. And the other thing is, how do you feel now? Oh, I felt strong and fit. I felt fine. Okay. Like I, I felt fine, you know, for after two days of you know being on the can um <laughs> so the, i knew it wasn't the coronavirus now the other part of it is too or like was I said, it the the cold coronavirus <laughs> that 40 ounce flu huh <laughs> that one got me no it wasn't even that um that 12 pack but i'm i'm high up. risk right i'm, I'm yeah. considered part of the high risk with my heart condition and and everything like that so. i completely forgot about until you mentioned it last weekend well, I, milling around. I had a couple of people ask me like, ah, oh, well, you, you, you should be at work doing. And I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, what good am I going to do anybody if I'm locked up in ICU? Cause my heart is deciding to act, to flare up. Right. Like I, I do know, I do know nobody any good. Yeah. So I figured, you know what, take the chance. Let's get as much of it over with and dealt with. And, and again, I was hoping that we would be kind of moving past this into as i'm getting back into work and i feel like we're not and you know with winnipeg shutting down their inspections the work shortage is coming so we'll see uh actually we were i was supposed to go on site on monday for a few days and now it got bumped a couple day or a day or two because there's too many people on site that day so then we have to wait yeah anything over 10 yeah as of today or as of i think tomorrow morning yeah or well, when you guys will hear this, it'll be today. Um, yeah, it's wild times out there, I and think. it's legit. So yeah, I guess stay safe. I had my hands got so dry from washing them at work all the time. If whenever we walk in the lunchroom or the one office, like you know, I'm supposed to go wash your hands, yada yada. So yeah, I'm trying to. I'm not trying to be a dummy and not do it. So I'm you know trying to do my part at least and. And fright, man. My hands are getting dry. You got to get that Today, they look okay. They feel okay because, I mean, I've been uh, at home or well, I went to Wally World, but. Yeah, the big trip. I know. Big trip into <laughs> town. So, but uh, I've been pretty contained per se. And I mean, when I was out running, I uh, wasn't in contact with anybody. So, I wasn't very concerned about yeah. that. So, but uh, no, it's. Unfortunately, it's it's here, and we just got to deal with it the best we can. So, actually, a, a guy from work, he was him and his wife had took a week vacation. Uh, they got back to Manitoba now two weeks ago, on today. On um, so two weeks ago on Friday, whatever that was. And so now he's been off work for two weeks post that because of the self isolation because they were in California. Eh? Yeah. Down in that Los Angeles, that, that Los Angeles sun. That hot hotel. Woo! Hanging out with Daniel. 
And you know Daniel, bro. <laughs> Daniel makes his own choices. <laughs> he makes his own choices, huh? So, and actually, he got tested for uh, the Coronas this week. So, he was awaiting his results this week. So, I haven't heard, but See, here's, here's praying that uh, he's fine, or at least if he does get it, then he'll pull through and... See, it's difficult. But. So, you know, I, I was supposed to, I'm supposed to get tested and cleared to go back to work. Now, the problem with that is to be tested, you need a doctor's note. And to get a doctor's note, you got to be showing symptoms. And if you're asymptomatic. Give me that hit. For the gram, boy. The if, you're gram. Asymptom- if you're asymptomatic. No doctor wants to see you because you're risking a potential, you know, a potential person getting sick. You're... That corona, huh? Yeah, and, and I just... it's I'm supposed to get tested, and it's so hard because, you know, doctors don't want to see you if you're healthy because they don't want somebody getting sick. They... But you can't just walk into the testing facility because they only want people that are referred. Yeah. And it's just... I mean, again, not saying I, I would do better in government, but I think they're... You know, there should have been, there should be a better way to do it now. I mean, I like what Alberta did. Alberta released home testing kits. Did they? Yeah, you swab your cheek. No way, I didn't yeah. know about that. Cheek and saliva, and they'll pick it up right from your door. They, uh, from what I heard, they hired Uber drivers. No way. Yeah, so That's the Uber, awesome. so the Uber drivers are, Dude, are still working. Doing the Lord's work, huh? They, they doing it, boy. They doing the Lord's work. <sighs> yeah. Man, I've been parched today. We'll keep drinking. That's what I says. Get get them fluids up, huh? Gotta stay hydrated. Um, get in, yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm curious to see how this whole thing's gonna play out, and you know, looking forward to when life is gonna be able to go back to normal a little bit. That'll yeah, be, that'll be nice. Ain't mad about that opportunity. No, absolutely. So hopefully, it'll be in time for hunting season. I'm How's a little concerned. Like I haven't heard, but I mean. Bear season's coming up here, end of uh, April, and I'm wondering, like, are clients from the states going to be able to come up? You know, like, am I going to be out of... No, they won't be able to. Like, if... I mean, I don't know how long the border's going to be closed, right? Well, I mean, as I... Honestly, from my personal opinion, and, you know, judging on what I feel like would happen, which, I mean, again, I'm no expert. <laughs> nor am I. I, I would think the borders will be closed until the case load drops dramatically. Like the the number of cases every day drops dramatically. Yeah, I would tend to agree with that. And problem is, it's got to, it. It's almost like it has to hit everybody before it's going to get better. Yeah, unless well, they, unless or, they get the the cure out. See the no, vaccine. Well, they keep talking about working with the bell curve, so that's the thing. Like if we can minimize that peak of the bell, yeah, that's going to be a cool thing to do a very cool thing. that would be rad i would say cool beans to that i think it i think it requires a, a full lockdown though yeah exactly it does I, I don't think i think everybody's gonna have to shut down people are gonna have to be not selfish i mean it it would be nice if and we were able to know when that's coming because people could stockpile and i'm not talking shit tickets i'm not talking the beef i'm talking get things you know I did I mention on the last podcast? I can't remember who I mentioned it to. Um, Alaska, <laughs> their number one selling item that they're sold out of in every store. Okay, guess hard liquor. Nope, cheese top ramen. Really doesn't expire. Oh, that's got to be so nasty for your gut if you're eating that. But think about it weeks and weeks and weeks in, in an apocalyptic or. Not yeah. Really. In an apocalyptic well, scenario, my apocalyptic what, scenario. What right good here. is your bread and milk and eggs gonna do? Like, well, exactly. not a whole heck of a lot. Well, at least milk you can freeze if you have yeah, power. You can. Yeah, well, it's cold outside. Which Alaska can be cold. It's a good chance you'll have yeah. freezable temperatures for a About minute. Yeah, eight, eight months of the year. Yeah. Yeah. That um, permafrost. But yeah. So, top ramen. People are stockpiling. I suppose they are. And I mean, I feel like if you're living in Alaska, you're ready. Kind of a doomsday. Kind you're a person. bit of a prepper, so yeah, I think I would, you're good to go, huh? I think so, yeah. You got a gun. Yeah, you, got you got enough got wild animals to keep you busy. And chances are you're not, well, I was going to say chances are you're not going on these extravagant voyages to elsewhere of the world, but 
then again, who knows, right? Each their own. Yeah. Some people might live there just for the sake of saying they live in Alaska so they can travel the rest of the world. Yeah. L- land's cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Build that dream house, huh? Get in there. Get in there. Although I wouldn't want to live on uh, Prince of Wales or... On that a fog knack, huh? Fog knack, yeah, no thanks. The meat tree. <laughs> yeah, that meat tree hitter. <laughs> I was it the rainiest place in North America or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, no thanks. It's between like that and Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> Not my thing, man. Nah. I don't mind the rain. I don't mind the rain, but I don't want it to be all the time. No. Whatever. I feel like you'd be miserable. I feel like people would be just miserable. I don't think anybody lives on those islands though. I don't <gasps> Wait, Ranella has a cabin on Prince of Wales, though. So there is people that have establishments there. Yeah, yeah but I don't think, I don't think nobody. Lives I'm sure full-time. there's somebody that lives there full time. Yeah, I'm they sure there's one be. kook. There's always a kook. There's that always does a it. kook. Ranella will be him. <laughs> That'll be Ranella. He is that kook. He is, yeah. But oh, I'm gonna how's that me. sweet tea? That's good. Yeah, that's I a like hitter. Yeah. You throw a little uh, extra in there. I'm gonna have to that, this next one. That that club hit. Yeah. All right. Yeah, All right. Club hit, huh? All right. Oh, man, what's been going on? So, um, it's been a minute. It's been going on. What's been going on? Let's see. I heard about something new in Manitoba this year. COVID? It's called... <laughs> <laughs> that corona. <laughs> it is called Manitoba e-licensing for all of our hunting, fishing, par- uh, licenses, park vehicle permits, and other permits as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, pretty, pretty cool. neat. It's very nice. Okay. Okay, you don't remember that um, when Jim and Pam are going to move to Philadelphia, and then Pam interviews at that uh, law firm, and then oh, she yeah. finds out that this, the boss is like another Michael Scott. It's exactly and like he Michael keeps Scott. keeps saying, pretty cool. Uh, I haven't watched like the last two seasons of The Office in a minute. Okay. I kind of stop at season seven. You got to keep talking straight into your mic, though. Yeah, I'm trying to. I have. I know you want to keep looking at me. I have a turn. I'm just not used to. I like looking at people when I talk. I know. I know. I know. Um, we got to. We got to figure this out. Yeah, one day. We're, might... Well, we keep switching setups. I know. Now we're sitting side by side. Yeah, that's never happened before. Well, we used to do it all the time. Oh, that's true. But we were recording but, just out of the laptop. Yeah. So but, that was less of an issue, Papa. <laughs> is it? Is there an issue, Papa? Issue, Papa. Um. Yeah, so e-licensing. e-licensing. It's, uh, well, we've been saying this spring for uh, a minute. And, That's uh, the new word. A hot minute, huh? A ho- uh, it's, it's been a grip. It's Wh- been a grip. A what? A grip. The kids are saying a grip now. What's that? I don't know. It just apparently means a minute. Really. I thought a minute, minute just got started. Yeah. Well, so did I. Nice. But they also, there's a difference between a Texas minute and a New York minute. Well, there's a difference between a mile and a Texas mile and a country mile. Yeah, that's true. I run in miles. You don't run in country miles. Oftentimes in country miles. You, you co-mingle the miles? Yes. But they all measure out to you a doing mile. That, that a C- mile is a mile is a mile. That C-dub-M, huh? That, <laughs> that, that uh, country mix mile. That that country western mile. All right, spaghetti western miles. I mean, you heard it here first, folks. Um, yeah, so basically what it is is um, very similar to an online shopping, you know, like Amazon or eBay or whatever you're going ba- to. Basically, this is how pretty much every other state and province is doing it nowadays. Yeah. Which is nice for the out-of-towners. It is. Or no for postage. the out-of-provincers. No postage. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about... No, we can do draws online now, too. Is that part of the new... Yes, it is. Okay, so can you cruise around on the site here? Yeah, uh, here, just let me get moved a little bit. Get get yourself sorted here. Actually, we can take a quick break and come back. I need to get myself sorted here real quick. All right. All right, the initial focus is to sell angling, hunting licenses. Sorry, angling and hunting licenses. There is a difference. (laughs) And park vehicle permits online beginning this spring. These are the licenses that represent the largest portion of annual license sales. So this is coming off of the gov.mb.ca slash e-licensing 
slash timelines, and I'm jumbling my words. Thank you very much. That English, huh? Yeah, that English. <clears throat> Manitoba will be adding additional licenses and permits to the system in the future. The goal is to consolidate park vehicle permits as well as hunting and angling licenses into a one-stop shop that will maximize efficiencies, but most importantly... Get that? Most importantly. Most importantly. Provide better and expanded service to the public. That's you and me, brother. We are the public. Hell yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. Manitoba conservation and climate staff, as well as participating retailers, will have the necessary resources and training to minimize disruptions and assist customers during this transition. Okay, so... Where will I be able to get a license, you ask? Okay, so you'll be able to purchase your licenses online from home at participating retailers and conservation and climate offices or by phone. And you can... Oh, contact information and lists of locations will be provided in the spring. It is spring, Cat Daddy. Hey, government of Manitoba, I know you're dealing with this whole COVID thing, but uh, get it together. The boys are trying to get draw applications in. We need to get it going. We need to get in there. Um, yeah, so basically all you're going to need, uh, you create a customer ID and an account. Um, what you need is your name, your date of birth, mailing and home address, phone number, uh, email address, one identification number. So you're looking for driver's license, driver's or- license or... Uh, whatever other well, forms probably of Manitoba education. health card might work too. Generally, that works for things, but maybe in not. some in some places, yeah. Maybe sin card. Just you just want to, yeah. Well, I they try know what to. it is already. I know. I try not to. Um, I used my social insurance number for getting my new cell phone. So do you? Yeah, you want to talk smack? You can talk smack. I don't even know my. I won't sin. get in your face. I don't know my sin off by heart. I do. I, I laugh at people when they carry it in their wallet. Like, you're not supposed to do that, son. It's like your passport. Like, I, I don't think people realize that if you lose your passport, like, that is punishable by jail time. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. You only get two in your lifetime. So if you lose it and you lose both of them, yeah. hey, guess what, cat daddy? Uh, y- you're done. So every year your uh, customer ID number and your account stays the same so you just continually run with that every year every year so it's great um what else do we have here some licenses and permits that are required for the license year are available to purchase spring 2020 well I'm looking for my bear license already so come on guys let's go yeah we're getting close to the draw time too yeah So you have to print out your angling licenses and park vehicle permits. It doesn't specify for hunting licenses, which is kind of interesting. I'm sure there'll be more to that later on. Yeah. Okay, so uh, do you require game tags to purchase a big game license? Yes, you must receive your game tags prior to purchasing a license. Game tags will also be available at participating retails, retailers and district offices. Um the district office. So I think, I mean, maybe I don't understand this quite correctly, but basically you're going to, you still will have to buy your tag. Yeah. Um, however, the license, the right to hunt that will be done online. This seems similar in my mind to the Ontario uh, outdoor card scenario. Yes. I would agree. But I don't know, right? Like who knows right now? Yeah. We don't know. And and that's the thing. So uh, there's another ask question here. So it says, are the tags are tag licenses printed on a regular piece of paper? No, um, stupid question. Uh, just want to put that in there for stupid question. Um, are tag licenses? No, I read that one already. Where was I looking? So that's insinuating that they're going to send their tags to us in the mail. Okay, so. Uh, oh, shoot. I had that up here. Give me one second to find it. Uh, there is something on the timeline. So you can... Um, what is the process to get a game tag? When you log into the system, 
You will be asked to enter a game tag number to activate the license. All other hunting requirements will be captured in the customer profile. Okay. You must have a game tag to purchase a big game and or a wild turkey license, whether by ordering online at a retailer or by phone, blah, blah, blah. You can pre-order game tags online free of charge. They will be mailed to you based on your profile address. Please allow five to seven business days. In the event you cannot pre-order tags online, you can go to a conservation office or retailer that is participating in the Manitoba e-licensing system to acquire them. Ah. Yeah, so I think basically you print your tags. You know, the part that you, the, the pieces of paper that you put on the antler and on the hoof. No, they're sending that to you. Like the actual game tags, I, like I just read here. Yeah. They are mailed to you based on your profile. Address. Okay, so it's the license you print. Yeah. The top, so the I guess right, the top. The right to do it. The top that you fill out. Yeah. That's what you get in the mail. Yeah. Or yeah. that's what you print. Yeah. Oh. So here we I go. I don't know if I like that. Big as much. game and land owner elk draws. The big game draw is a lottery system for allocating a limited number of available licenses. Okay, we know what that is. Yeah, we got it. How do I apply for the big game draw? The big game draw will be available to complete online through the e-licensing system. Uh, applications to be available and to complete it online? Yes. Blah, 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 blah. How will the first come, first serve caribou tags work with this system? Okay, create your profile, game tag, yada, yada. When caribou licenses become available online, on the specific date noted in the hunting guide, customers will need to log in to the system and go through the sales process to purchase a license. Licenses will be issued on a first-come, first-served basis until the number of caribou licenses available are sold. Kind of like buying campground spots. Yeah. Or buy, or like buying things on eBay that are kind of auction where you can buy it now. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, I mean... Caribou is rapidly declining in Manitoba. I don't even know if there actually will be a season this year. There's been talk of uh, ending the caribou season for a few years really? here in Manitoba. Yeah, it's. I haven't heard that. Uh, I was talking with my dad about it the other day because hmm. I'd asked him when he was planning on doing another caribou hunt because I'd, I'd be interested in going, and uh, that was quickly axed. Um, most of the caribou are now migrating through saskatchewan as opposed to manitoba because they've been so heavily hunted over the last five to eight years okay so it's been difficult they, they've just found a way around it really that's yeah i mean it's caribou surviving right it's instinct for them so mm -hmm. um which i think part of the problem is because it is a first come first serve you know it and it is a generally it, it's a very good hunt for somebody that um doesn't necessarily Hunt? Has well, no, not even that. Has never done a, a hunt like that, you know, a fly-in hunt where you're left all alone, unguided. It's a very good hunt to do unguided because you, it doesn't take much, right? You need a good set of binos and patience and some feet to walk on. Pretty much, yeah. So, um, yeah. So we'll see what happens with that. But I, what? How are you feeling reading all that about this e-licensing stuff? Um, I wish they would have rolled it out at like New Year's, honestly, yeah. like. The whole system ready to go? Because well, we got a month till the end of applications are in for uh, for elk. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, and I haven't heard hiding her hair of this yet, so I'm a little concerned. Yeah, because I want to kill an elk. I want to at least try to kill an elk this year. Yeah. So well, we we and and we've talked about that lots in the last year. Yeah. About, about the potential that you know we could we could hunt elk, and again, I think there is the old trusty application process that I might I'm have to might have to go downtown to Salto Crescent. Yeah, I, I think we do still like there. There is that. Obviously, we have that option. They're not going to just because they're not uh, rolling this out yet. They're not going to cancel the elk season. Um, but yeah, I think I think it should have been rolled out earlier. Yeah. Uh, especially with the application process. I just think that that was... Hang on here. At least open up that part of it, even if the site isn't ready for it. Yeah. Um, I feel like that should have been one of the first things they worked on, especially with bear season starting in spring and everything like that. I feel like uh, 
government of Manitoba, the Parks Department, Parks and Recreation Department. <laughs> uh i think jerry's working on it and if you guys <laughs> if you guys know parks and rec and jerry is really that uh he's that real i feel bad for the guy yeah uh if he's, he's not re- if he's not filing things uh he's he's messing something up oh yeah he's he's not saying proper english that english huh yeah but if you guys haven't seen parks and rec you got to check out parks and rec that is that is really that hitter it's it's a good i find it's a good mix um to get away from the office for a little bit yeah, because the humor is similar, but it's different. Le- Leslie Nope is smarter than Michael Scott is. She is super cringy though. Sometimes, oh, she is. So, yeah, I'm. Uh, I wonder if I should uh, maybe next week I'll call Conservation Manitoba and inquire about uh, elk draw. Yeah, it'd be worth it. I I maybe I should do the same thing. Squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? I suppose it does, but um, but I think I think overall it's a good good thing for the Manitoba Parks Department. I mean, I think a it. You mean conservation? Sorry, did I say Parks Department? It's yeah. called conservation and climate now. Yeah, well, everybody's changed their names to other things. You know that. You know, he, no, let's not get into politics right now. No, I wasn't talking about politics. I was going to get into politics. What what I'm saying is this, not. Daddy. Uh, you notice how there's only two genders getting the coronavirus? Funny. Well, you know, that That's works, mostly huh? men. <laughs> yeah, yeah freaking women. Those are women's. They're always one step ahead of us. Always. You know, they're, they're the old saying that behind every good man, there's a great woman. No, no, no. no yeah, no. that's bullshit. Yeah. Um, no, I think overall it's a good it's a good thing for... Uh, for everybody, I think a you limit you're you're gonna limit the people that don't have a hunter safety from buying tags, which I think is a good thing because I know people that do not either they don't have their hunter safety or they don't have their card because it got stolen in a wallet out of their truck and they haven't ever been down there to replace you it. You need to do that because you I know need I your let, you need your you number need, now. Yeah, to apply. Yeah, I know. I need to. Actually, I, mine's rubbed off. I need a new card, too. Well, let's make a trip out of it. Oh, we can do that in town here. To get the card? Yeah. Oh, I thought you had to go to Winnipeg. Nope. Somebody told me I had to go to Winnipeg. Well, they were wrong. Huh. Wouldn't I be, think. Wouldn't be the first time. Um, Pretty I think you do have to go cool. to Winnipeg. To get the card the same day, anyway, you do. Well, it's spring. You don't need the card the same day. Well, right what now. if applications comes... What, what if your card's missing on the day applications roll out? We have a month. Monday, <laughs> Monday, let's go. Um, yeah, so I, and I mean, I think it's just overall, it's good. I think you limit the the amount of human error that can go into that, and uh, it's be just becomes more accessible. Yeah, absolutely. You you give people from out of province and out of country a better chance to pour into the local economy and our conservation fund. Absolutely, and which we, we need. need. We we do need. We have a we have a great, um, a a great diversity of wild critter running around these parts. We got we got deer. We got elks. We, we got, got mooses. We, we got, got mooses. We got them. We got them brown bears. No, no we, we, got we don't bears. got them brown. Well, color faced. The odd the odd time the you odd hear, you you'll hear faced. one of them brown bears up north, but. Well, you technically you do have brown bears in in Manitoba. Technically speaking, Ursus arctos. If we're gonna get into the nomenclature of it, they're very rare. No, a polar bear is still a brown bear. If you go by the Linnaean name, it's still a brown bear. <sighs> if we're and that's why I said technically. If we're gonna get technical about it, well, we'll. <sighs> We got Arctos, bears. Daddy. We got polar bears. Not that you can hunt them in Manitoba. We got uh, uh we we got uh, possums. We we got them coons. We got beavers, huh? We got them them full body coons. <laughs> that <laughs> raccoon hitter. Uh, we got yeah them. What is what is Bichas hit them burglars of the rainforest? <laughs> Something like that. We we got a few of those waterfowl meccas oh, running around up here. That's boy. A, and, I think yeah, I think it's going to be great for for not only our economy but our conservation. Um, and the Americanos that want to come up. Does it worry you though at all? 
do you think that that's going to open up um and and maybe i'm far reaching with this but do you think it's going to open up you know more guiding services around around here in steinbach with whitetail because people are going to be able to draw in other other you know people from the states that can't get that don't have the preference points to go hunt mature whitetail in in uh, in minnesota no it's not going to change because in manitoba to buy a if you want to hunt with an outfitter they'll get you a tag yeah but what so, what i'm saying so is okay so maybe you don't need preference points for that okay but, but i'm not even saying with an outfitter i'm saying these people can just come up and get a tag that's fine so i mean it's going to increase the um, all those americans are going to south dakota anyways I know. I'm just. I'm just trying to ask a question. That's or Saskatchewan. All. Uh, no, I'm in. I'm in favor. favor oh, I'm, of I'm totally in favor. But do you and think I'm there's a worried. long-term repercussion there no. with with bringing more hunting pressure into our if area? It, honestly, I think it's going to piss locals off because they don't want to use a frigging computer to get their hunting license. Oh, that way the old. But I'm the old guard. The old guard. Or even young folks our age that are like, "What is this? I don't want to use a computer. I work on vehicles all day." I'm thinking of one friend of mine in, in particular. <laughs> well, I, yeah, no, I, I agree. I think I think the old guard's gonna have a problem with it, but it's not. Again, they're not completely scrapping. No, you can the, still uh, go to the store and buy a you license. Still go to Sardell General Store and buy yourself a license, and they'll fill it out for you. And I mean, I'm sure you know that'll take a couple years to scrap. But no, no, I don't think they're gonna scrap that. Honestly, oh, I think they will one day because they're gonna. No, they're gonna like. There's prerequisites to become a retailer, though. Like you have to. Let's find it here. Um, I just think that once once you start a swing like this, you, so uh, here we go. Oh, so what do I need to be a vendor to participate in the new system? Beer. All retailers, vendors will be required to meet and agree to the following basic requirements: have a computer, high speed internet connection, and a printer. Provide a valid email address. Enter into a contractual agreement with the Manitoba government and provide banking information to allow for weekly electronic fund transfers and have a current vendor account in good standing. <laughs> and will manual licenses be available to retailers, vendors when e-licensing system is implemented? No. Once the e-licensing system is fully activated, there will be no more manual license issues. So, so do I get it? Do I get? Do I get an apology? Because that's exactly the no, point no, no, I was no. arguing. A manual license. It's all gonna like they're gonna have their little station to get a license. They just won't have that book where they flip it open. That's and what say, I'm saying. Pass me your driver's license, but you'll still be able to do it at a retailer. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see what you're. So. Yeah. So you're kind of right, we're, and I'm yeah. kind of wrong. We're both a little. So we'll call it a 50-50, and we'll walk move away. on, nerds. MPI would, MPI would be okay with that. Yeah, I'll pay, I'll pay 100 I'll pay, bucks. I'll pay the deductible. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, I brought my own rye, so what does that say? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, you got that sweet tea hit, though. I did. <laughs> I am. Um... Yeah, no, I think I don't know. I think once one things, uh, once things start to become the online variety, uh, right. I think uh. eventually they just all go that way. You know, I don't think it's long until. Well, I mean, you even see it with grocery stores now. You know, well, superstore, well, you can now. order your groceries online, and just yeah, you pick it up, and you don't even have to leave your car. It's wild times, man. No, okay, I'm even before this whole COVID thing, you could do that. I know, I know, it's just I know. nuts. It's just. It's I mean, nuts. the first time I saw that, I was like, "Boy, this is wild times." This, <laughs> that ain't it. Daddy. And you know what's even wilder? Okay, let me tell you. Let me tell you. All right. In Winnipeg, the Manitoba Liquor Mart is doing deliveries. That's dangerous, son. <laughs> that is dangerous. I'm telling you, man. Like, get that in rural Manitoba. Yeah. Why, why isn't Steinbeck following? I'm sure save a lot of. You'll sure save so. a lot of DUIs if you get that in rural Manitoba. <laughs> yeah. They should have that all year round. They really should. <laughs> yeah. Because when's when's the worst time to run out of beer? When you want more. Exactly. And then you got to, well, some folk might risk driving to go get more. Is that and we don't condone that on this truck this year. 
We don't condone that on this here radio, digital radio, digital program. radio program. Yeah. We have a strong none of that policy. Absolutely. On the digital radio program. That is Flatlands Phil and Val. That's correct. It's in our mission statement, I think. I haven't written that yet, I so I'll, yet. I'll throw it in there. <laughs> It'll be, yeah. We're revising daily. <laughs> <laughs> Going with the flow. <laughs> we, we doing it, boy. We doing it. Um, yeah. So, uh, do you have up. any thoughts on the e-licensing other than being in favor? Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see, you know, obviously when it rolls out and what it's all going to look like and and uh, how it's going to work. Okay. So I think there's a lot of moving parts that are going to play into it. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm strongly in favor of it. I think it makes it a lot easier. I think one of the reasons I've I've never applied for elk before is just because it's you got to run to Winnipeg or mail it in or mail it in, and then you got to risk you got to send a check in the mail, and then you got to risk. You, I don't know. It just it always seemed like such a backward system. Yeah. And I get that. You know, again, you go back 50 years, not nobody had the internet, so. I think with the technology we have, obviously, uh, I think the first year is going to be rough with it as ne- they figure out the uh, the kinks in the system. I never understood why you couldn't just drive to the local conservation office and apply for a draw tag. You know? Like, in Steinbach here, why don't we just drive to the office, yeah. do the thing there. I got my guide license there. Yeah. You know? And... You can go buy your, that's where you go buy your uh, timber harvesting licenses and you can buy whatever hunting license you want. Why could you not do a draw license, a draw tag, you know? Yeah. And it bothers me. And now we don't have to worry about it though. Now we're, now we're doing it ourselves. We doing it. We'll have a little podcasting party when we're doing our applications. Yeah. As we're filling them out. Excuse me while I adjust my microphone. Yeah, that's okay. I've been one of those things now that it's there it's too easy to just adjust with and i can see, we can see the levels so it's like yeah what oh, part I start. yeah has the most oh it, it these mics are amazing <laughs> like with how you just turn like you can hold one like a yeah that's because it's a condenser microphone yeah just saying that's that's how it that's works that test that people car- are not gonna know what cardio- i did but that cardioid pattern huh is that what that is yeah so, it doesn't record anything from back here or less, right? Less, yeah. So if you if you talk into it from this end, oh, you tr- be, I tried it. You don't hear rather, You don't hear nothing. It's gonna be rather Eddie. quiet, huh? You don't hear nothing. Um, oh yeah, I'm excited for the e licensing. I'm excited to apply for elk. I just wish that I knew when that was gonna roll out, and maybe it's worth the phone call. Yeah, I think next so. week. Yeah, at least a phone call. Absolutely. Or maybe storm in there. They have glass on the windows there, anyways. So yeah, kicking and screaming, boy. Mm-hmm. Just the way I came roll up, up. in. Roll up, be like, "Yo, where's my draw applications at?" See if you I'm get... fixing on hunting some of them wapities this year. We'll see year. if you get this one. Where are the turtles? Where are the turtles? Michael Scott. Yeah. When uh, when him and Dwight it crash into the pond, remember that? Yeah, I you remember, remember that. that? That's good because he follows the GPS. Yeah, well, that's yeah. a lake, Daddy. Yeah, that that. Well, yeah, what did I say? Pond? Ah, oh, could have could have been a pond. You can see clear across could've, it. Could've, could have been a large pond. Could have been a large pond. Yeah, yeah. It's that's a difference valid. between a large pond and a lake. What, like, at what point is it a large pond to a lake? Is there livestock drinking from it? Okay, I could. Yeah, all right. Like if it's if, but okay. what if no li- what if no livestock drink from it is still considered a lake then, or does it strictly go on size? Well, name a pond that doesn't have livestock drinking from it. The three ponds that we have on our farmyard. Well, is it? Are they fenced in? The ponds? No, they just. There's no cattle there. Well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> get some friggin' <laughs> well, cows in there. Oh well, yes, I get that. Let's but also, some... is that uh, I'm just trying to just dis- I'm just well, trying we're to gonna distinguish. We're going to run some fence this weekend, I guess. All right. Well, I'll go pick up the post tomorrow. Uh, I'll get that barbed wire, huh? <laughs> we're gonna run four strand or three. Actually, at work, at work, we're taking we're gonna take down some fence so we can 
I'll sell String it that. up. Yeah, string it up. Absolutely. Three <laughs> strand or four? Well, I think we'll run three because we're on a tight budget. All right. Actually, we can run the one electrical. <laughs> just, just run one strand. <laughs> and we'll plug into the neighbors. Just about <laughs> just, just about chest height. <laughs> we'll run one wire and we'll plug into the neighbors. <laughs> I got a couple extension cords we'll run. Don't Actually, worry about it. Just hot wired we'll, in. We'll just run a gas generator because it's cheap right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's 69 cents, huh? Ain't mad about that. Yeah, Thank you, COVID, huh? Yeah, I ain't mad about it. Um, just like quit touching me, but keep touching yeah, me. Yeah, but keep touching me. <laughs> I said that the other day. Like, <laughs> there's there's some actually serious benefits to this. <laughs> if gas didn't go bad, I'd be filling up every container. I I mean, I already did. I got three jerry cans of gas Decent. in there. I've been thinking about buying a slip tank, but haven't done it yet. <laughs> so okay, now funny you mentioned that because i've been thinking the same thing are you gonna plumb your slip tank in if you buy one no no just have a pump i'd say so i'd plumb mine in for sure plumb mine in i honestly had never thought of that see i only reason i thought of it is then you don't need to buy a pump that, then those are expensive a you don't have to buy a pump b you don't have to wire in a switch you don't have to wire in Run more wires to your battery. You don't have to, and if you don't do that, then you always forever have to get the cables out, and they're that's not a thick wire. You got to get the cables out, drag them around your truck, clip them on your battery, fire up your pump. Well, if you wire it properly, then you don't have to do that. No, but I'm saying a lot of people don't. Like all the hillside trucks, uh, they don't do that. They just take their clamps out and clip them on a battery. Now like again, some delinquency happening. That's what I. That's what I I'm saying. I remember uh, BT having a slip tank. In his rig, and he'd uh, it was all wired up nice and yeah. So. See the Fords, the Fords are nice because they have their auxiliary switches like they come from factory that way, and they have all the connectors. So all you have to do is run two wires into the switch, which is super nice. Um, but only reason I thought of this because I again was looking at buying that diesel, and that diesel. My dad actually has his slip tank plumbed in. So it sits, it's a, it's a slip tank that sits underneath his box rail so that he can still roll his tunnel cover down and it's plumbed right in with just a ball valve. Oh. So, so he can fill it up and if he wants to put a pump in there, he can. And if he needs to use it in his tank, he doesn't have to run over the side of the truck and spill diesel and do this. And that's the thing with those pumps, a lot of them. I've found with the ones I've dealt with the mechanism that shuts off the pump, you know, when it gets full, right? Yeah. It goes tick. Well, the mechanism that does that doesn't actually work. So then it just starts firing diesel and the hose holds so much diesel or gasoline that it just drips out into your, into your truck box. So this way you eliminate that. Okay. And they're actually not that expensive. You can get them made for like three to 400 bucks. Really? Yeah. Huh. I did not know that. Yeah. You just can't ever ask for a fuel tank, or, uh, for a slip tank. Okay. You got to ask for a water tank. Right. Because the specifications that you have for a... Oh, we're, we're doing this live now, huh? Might as well. Yeah. Thought you were thought you were going to wait, huh? No, nah, it's just Instagram live. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, IG. Oh, there's one person watching. Oh. And it's too far away. I can't see... Need glasses? Who it is? Lean in there, boy. Oh, hey. Jonathan Weeb from Wildcard. How you doing? Jonathan Weeb. What's going on, boy? Um, Wildcard what? No. Why don't you put that in front? Because it has to can you Can you see me right now? Because <laughs> I gang, can't see. Gang, daddy. I yeah, can't I can see, see it. You. Oh, okay. I can't see it. I can't. I honestly can't see myself. Um, no. So the thing is, it if says, you go to any says gang, gang, daddy, what it do, boy? What he do? Or is that my? Which that's your cousin? Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. That makes more sense. I was thinking. Oh, that's a different last name. Yeah. My bad. Uh, yeah, Johnny. We. Hey, that's that's. Okay. Speaking of Johnny Weeb, that's the Southeast leading Sam Scratch expert. Hey. We got to get him. We got to get him on here. You've been talking about that. Yeah, I've been been working on getting him onto the uh, the deep sneeze. The deep sneeze, uh, which is a offensive nickname to have right about now. 
Um, <laughs> I thought that was funny. I was going to write that one down. I didn't somewhere. even think I about that. I did. Um, no, so you got to, if you go to a welding shop and ask them to make you a slip tank, which is, you know, it's cheaper than buying them because buying them, you're looking at two grand. Yeah. You want to, I don't know. Let, let, here, let me lean in here. He says, my boy's gang, 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 daddy, and also big facts. What does that mean? Big facts? Yeah. About him being the Sam Scratch expert. Oh, Sam Scratch. Hey, welcome to my cousin here, Zachary Teeson. Mr. Teeson. All the way up from the Riding Mountain area. Oh, that's that, uh, that, that SR, huh? That scouting report. <laughs> that scouting report. Hey, hey what I actually do? got one from the other day. I'll have Did to show you, you a picture. Ah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to disclose Well, we're not putting that on the Instagram. <laughs> no. So we're not putting that on the interwebs. <laughs> no. Hell no. I think he'd drive on down here and try to beat me up. But I'd say, try. son, <laughs> let's have a drink son, instead. No, let's, <laughs> let's have one of them sweet tea and Canadian club hitters, huh? And Parkland boys, he says, gang, <laughs> get in there. <laughs> He's play, used to play up, play hockey up that, that neck of the woods with that Park against the woods, Parkland huh? Rangers. Oh, yeah, back in that the old a. that Eastman day, yeah. How about that? That was that hitter. Oh, God. Um, okay, Zach, do you have any uh, thing you like to hear about or John? Yeah. Oh, John Give left. It. Wow, we're down to one. Oh. Wow, John. Oh, we got two. We're back oh, two. Rogers here. Oh, Welcome, Rog. Roger. We saw him at the, uh, at the Byron Falk show. At that Byron Falk show. Sadly, they had to come home early due to this COVID. This COVID hitter, huh? Anything you fellas like to hear about? What you, yeah, what, what do you want to hear? Oh, we got we got twa. Uh, the Rangers suck. The Parkland Rangers, I would agree. So, although they had a couple of guys that are playing in the show now, really? Yeah. Uh, there was a there's a, a kid that plays on. Uh, uh, hang on, Roger says, "Hey, hey, 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 hey!" Back to Roger. Hey, hey, hey! Listen to this episode. Tune in. No, John says he's here. I said he was gone. Okay, he's here. all right, Good. he's back. Good. All right, um, yeah, Parkland. Yeah, there's a kid that plays for Philadelphia. Philadelphia is uh, from the Parkland region, I believe. Okay, in Manitoba. Worst part is his brother was a way better hockey player. Just got into that them Johns. <laughs> he got into them Johns. Them Johns, huh? and then he stopped. Okay, Johnny says uh, anything but COVID nineteen. Sorry, we spent twenty minutes on COVID earlier in the episode. Yeah, you're so. gonna want to skip the first twenty minutes of this episode then. Um, but I mean, you want to hear two delinquents talking about two muppets rambling about COVIDs. A couple, a couple. You want you want to hear a couple thick mitches talk about what things they don't know. Well, <laughs> that's what you've got here. That's <laughs> and really it's recorded it. and it's going and alive. It's, it's on the. It'll be on the interwebs. It'll be on there um, soon. Probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. I would think. Uh, probably tomorrow. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to hear? What's that feedback? They they don't seem to be hitting it up uh, too hard on the feedback. So, well, their loss. I'd say. I then. guess. Although they are doing us a service. They're entertaining us. They are atta- entertaining us. And I hope this is entertaining for everybody that's listening. In their Actually, hey, Johnny Weeb, okay. I'll be emceeing his wedding. No! Yeah, you bet. That? Yeah, he, oh. asked, he called me the other day. And, Congratulations. And uh, at least I think at this point he hasn't backed out of it yet. So Welcome here. Man. Welcome here, fellow. Uh, what does that say? I'm going to dive in there. T-Mac out. T Mac Outdoors. Shout T-Mac out to T Mac Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for looking out at us. What do you want to hear, boy? Huh? Any uh, takes you want us to give you? Some Any hot takes, take? some heater hot takes, some pro tips from dipshits. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We got th- we got the, that hot hose hit here. We got it. But um, yes, I'm not extra. I'm drinking whiskey out of a Yeti instead of a cup. So before I catch a whole bunch of internet hate, I'll just put that to bed now. Good night, Jim Kite. That hitter. That real hitter, huh? The Steven Ranella is the face of that company. Which I find extremely easy to believe. Yeah. You know, I was... He's a great individual. I was going to donate to Ducks Unlimited the other day and get a free Yeti. And then I decided I didn't want to spend seventy five dollars. And then buy, they, they when said, you can buy a Yeti for thirty. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeff Martin Bohunt. Jeff Martin Bohunt. Hey, 
Shout Speak, out to actually, him. Actually, got a question for Jeff Martin Bohunts. How you uh, you were you were dealing uh, as a pro staff member? I believe it was Ozcut. Was it Ozcut Broadheads or there was a Broadhead company? It was a True True Blood. Maybe true, I think it was True Blood. True Blood. How I, how have you been? Uh, how have you been liking them? Yeah, Zach. Uh, we've got a. How do you say that politely? A shitload. A shitload of geese out here. <laughs> <laughs> they're coming. They're coming, man. They're, they're. We'll send them your way. Right now, they're mostly up on the Red River area. I think, from what I've seen, at least. So, we'll send them your way. We'll, we'll do send what we can. Them. We'll send them packing. Yeah. Just make sure you send them back. Yeah. 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 Jeff Martin says True Blood. True Blood. I, I've been liking them so far, buddy. I've been. Uh, I've been curious. I saw a couple of your. He says, "Love them." Okay, well, Wor- worth the worth the investment. You think? Well, he's a rep. So I know. I'm, I just, hey, I'm just. I'm not trying to get the guy in trouble here, but I mean, I, do, I mean, hey, I'll do what I can. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. I'm, Absolutely. I'm still in love with my slick tricks. To be honest. To be I'm, honest. I'm going back to mechanical this year. Yeah. 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 I'm. Uh, I, I I can't beat the way they fly. Well, it's, it's true, and, and you have true to True blood. <laughs> oh, <laughs> get in there. Get in there. <laughs> Woo. That's that hitter. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's – there's literally nothing to worry about. You hit some grass. Oh, or, you're, ta- you're talking about uh, uh, mechanical. Yeah. No, you're yeah. talking fix, sorry. You're oh, talking fix. what? You're going back I'm to mechanical. I'm going back to mechanical. Why? Can't beat the way they fly. Oh, come on. Serious. I never had a, a harder time tuning my bow into a broadhead than when I went to fixed. That's because you didn't try slick trick. Broadheads. No, that ain't it. I think I like my rages. I mean, we saw the hole that that thing punched in the side of that deer. Can't beat it, Daddy. And this is something we will always argue about. Always. Jeff Martin Bohunt says COVID 19 has left us out of stock. Oh. I do have a few. Extras, I can let you test drive. Hey, I'd be in. I'd be in. I'd be in. I'd absolutely. I'm. Uh, I'm in the process of getting getting myself a new new stick and string. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'd be. I'd be definitely curious to see what uh, you know what this new toy will will push those broadheads through. The COVID bow. Is that your build name? That could be the COVID. Bow. I don't know how much building I'm gonna do. <laughs> it's the COVID. Bow. I'm, uh, but actually, yeah. And another good topic to talk about. Our, uh so you just ordered a new site. I did. You ordered a seven pin. Yeah. What? Hey, d- hang on. All Ashton's right. here. My old friend. This my old friend. friend. Yes. You need glasses. I'm wearing my contacts. Well, this do you want an cool. extra pair? Well, uh, we got the NASCAR shut down. Don't have to skip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're our biggest hater, Zach. But thanks for your support. Shout out to you, Ashton. Gang. Gang Ashton boy. Hebert. Uh what are you doing? Mill writing in Hamilton or something? You're doing steel work right now or what is it? Let me know. Let me know exactly what it is. Because you were doing uh decks and fences. And then you Ashton milled about Hebert. Why is that answer so familiar? He's an old friend of mine. My old friend. My old friend. Good dude. Uh, I wish yes. I could have made it to his wedding, but it was Ontario, and I couldn't make couldn't it sneak out. away. Huh? No. Nope. So uh, seven. Cheers, pin. cheers to you, Ashton. Hey, hey. So you went seven pin, huh? Mill riding and carpentry all over North America. Gang. Dang. No, well, not right now. He's not. <laughs> hey, <laughs> don't be traveling, Ashton. <laughs> Stuck at home, you know. Okay, what are you saying? Yeah. Still throwing up a few decks when slow. Cheers, boys. Uh, <laughs> so you're doing decks and fences exclusively now, you must be, hey? Um, let me know when you're back here then, Ashton, and uh, we'll get together. We will get together. Like old times. Maybe we'll hit up, hit up the old shooting hole. Like the last time. Maybe a bit of both, huh? You do both the same the watering hole and the shooting hole. 
April end. Okay, man. Sounds good to me. Do you still have my number? <laughs> yeah, we will record a show. Absolutely. <laughs> Get in there. Get in there. Flatlands uh, Field and Foul. Guest on the pod. Hey, yeah, we man. haven't done one yet. Well, you you did. Yeah, I did. You did. I did. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're going with that. Uh, you're going with that seven pin, huh? Yeah. I ordered a seven pin, and uh, I'm excited. What oh, brand? I'm, What'd you go with? Oh, man. Where's my? Oh, I can't even. Uh, oh, whatever. Actually, I can. Actually, it you was, sent it to me. It was on sale at Cabela's. So, okay, Roger, you, I can't open that while I'm live. So sorry, <laughs> pal. You think? Uh, hey, Roger, you you gotta tighten it up, buddy. <laughs> you gotta tighten, you gotta it, up. tighten it up, daddy. Uh, you sent it to me once upon a time. Let's see here. What do I got from D Wayne? Oh, I don't want that. Huh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. It was sideways, but it was too far away. I couldn't see. What if you lean in here? I can I can scooch. Hold on. Let me okay. scooch you, pooch. Cool beans. How's that? That's better. How you doing, Ashton? It's harder to read at an angle. Well, just keep her straight forward. And I'll just scooch a little more, huh? Well, what the heck is that called? Where? Oh, there we go. I must have not saved it. Oh, okay. Actually, speaking of, we'll go back to Corona for a minute here. Yeah. My gym got shut down on Friday, like everybody else's gym in Manitoba, when they declared the state of emergency. Don't go to and gym. I was in there, and I was heartbroken. So that's they, my Were story. they shooing you out? <laughs> they were. They're like, get out of here. I was, I, it was a cold morning, so I was running on the treadmill, and then she's like, she like stops me. Oh, you don't have to stop, but you have to be out of here in 15 minutes. And you're like, oh, okay. I'm like, uh, All right. Uh, fine. That's fair. Yeah. Not really. Not really. So. Uh, life's busy just enjoying the downtime. Pimping out the whip, having some fun. Yeah, I've been seeing hey, those pictures, man. Looking P- good. PTL, boy. Looking, what looking what, do you, what does he got? Ford. What kind of Ford? Half ton. F1? Yeah. 5.3? I don't know. Or 5.4? I don't does he know. run that Eco Boost? Does he got that twin turb skis? I don't know. How many hairspares? How many Turks? These are the questions <laughs> that fellas have. <laughs> so it's a blackout seven pin sight. All right. So okay, now now explain to me your thought behind going to a seven pin. Uh basically I'm sick of a three pin and I want more range variety. And I feel now, I didn't actually look into this. I'm just hoping it's like my three pin, but I'm hoping if seven pins is too overwhelming, then I can just remove a couple pins. Remove a couple pins. Which I think generally they all are. Okay, so a 2019. Add a boy, 3.5 Eco Boost, boy. You, uh, are, you gonna get it, are you getting it tuned? Are you going to be putting a, putting oh, he's, a tuner he's on it? He's rolling out. He's rolling out. All right. Well, peace out, Ashton. See you later, Ashton. Miss we'll talk later. Hit me up miss you i do miss him i know i'm just saying i wasn't making a, I wasn't making a joke at your expense here i'm a man that misses <laughs> another man say, i'm a i'm a, well, I'm a single a little, man that misses a married man okay? a, little, a little homosexual but hey do what you gotta do daddy uh um, no, there's all there's a little bit of that in all of us <laughs> yeah, I, I guess wonder so. or like a couple there's a little delinquent in all of there's us a few grams yeah. of that yeah <laughs> running around couple, couple g's of that delinquency rolling around huh <laughs> In between your old ear holes, yeah, uh, yeah. So what, why why the seven pin? Uh, so because it was half off, and because it was, I just wanted to try something new. And you're not worried about it being uh, ruining your sight picker. Like I said, I'm hoping that I can remove if I need to, which I think most of them you can. Yeah. So if it does ruin my sight picture, well, then I'll just take off whatever I need to. Yeah. Two. And I'm like, a lot of guys run five to seven pins. Yeah. And if you want to get into hunting elk, well, you need more than a 20, 30, 40 pin. Totally. Right? Totally so, agree. That's yeah, why. see, we're going we're going opposites with with uh with the build. Are you doing the the twist? Like the one single pin? I'm doing single pin okay. adjustable, yeah. Well, the reason I bought this cuz it was such a smoking deal. Right? Yeah, and see and, and I think like again, I'm not knocking a 7 pin. I know me on my on my 5 pin, I didn't like it. Uh, I found it was clouding my judge or not my judgment. 
that's wrong. Uh, it was clouding my sight picture. Oh, hang on. I'm going to have to read this here real quick. Yeah, take your time. Going to tune it. Just finished an exhaust, rims, tires, cold air intake. Oh boy. Locking out some badges next to his new grill, leveling kit, changing on the lights. Oh boy. <laughs> then I'll be pouring back to work. Preach it, brother. Absolutely, buddy. Preach it's, that, brother. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll have to get your Instagram off uh, off Dwayne, yeah, and uh, give you a follow. I'm definitely interested in in uh, seeing that build. You got a name for it? Um, Black Ashton, <laughs> <laughs> Urban Ashton, <laughs> that urban that urban hitter. Um, so yeah, so I'm again. I think I, I'm again. I'm building kind of the bow I want. Yeah. So um, do you know exactly what model of bow you're going to be running? Uh for the most part, I mean, I think between the VXR and the Vertex, I'll be between the two. Okay, so we're looking at this Blackout 7 pin right now. Yeah. And honestly, it looks like there's a lot of room in there. It does. But we'll find out once I mount once, it. Yeah, once you're looking through it. So, hey, hey shout out to Playman Stoivanov. <laughs> Play, okay, he's been Playman's with us been from the day one, boy. <laughs> and we he's thank been you for that. day one. And we there isn't a for that. day that we don't podcast where we don't thank you and think about you, boy. You deserve hey. a cheers to hey. Playman. Yeah, he's he's that OG. Playman's praise, the OG. Praise God. Absolutely. Praise um, God. Yeah, so again, I'm I'm building I'm kind of building a, a bow. So I'll be going with the Vertex or the VXR, depending. I am gonna go really long with it, like 31.5. Okay, uh, I'm just on gonna, the ATA. I want. I just want to read the description here on sure. this site. Talk about talk about that thing for a for a minute. Oh, Playman gives us the thumbs up. Attaboy. Cool man. <clears throat> okay, so point number one: designed for today's high performance hunting bows. Okay, that's kind of lame. Lightweight, durable, machine aluminum, fully enclosed pins, alternating red and green for easy visibility. Uh, micro adjustable windage and elevation, dual position mounting, match the sight to your shooting style. So I'm hoping with the alternating red and green, that, that'll definitely help um, to keep it from getting confusing, etc. while you're looking through it. Um, 0.019 inch fiber pins. Stack tight technology ensures great performance on today's faster bows, micro adjustable. We went over that. Um, designed to perform with faster compounds. Is, uh, we went over, they just repeat themselves. Anyways, no, I'm just excited to try a new uh, bow site. For once, I've been running the same three pin for a coon's age. And I am sick of being limited to three different ranges. <clears throat> and like I mentioned, getting into, hopefully getting into Western bow hunting, or we the Western style, in air quotes, we'll say. Hopefully getting into that will require potentially a longer shot. So it's time to upgrade. And I mean, <laughs> what guy does not want to upgrade their hunting gear as it is, right? So... That's the way she goes. That's the way of the road. So, like I was describing, it has alternating red and green pins. So, at least that'll help for seeing things. So, you're looking at that Christmas light, that Christmas tree right that there, Christmas huh? That Christmas tree hitter, huh? Um, okay. Well, I'm, I'm very curious. I mean, like I said, I've never shot out of a single pin other than shooting the, um, the verdicts last year. Uh, the which, verdicts, which is a Matthews. That is a Matthews. Uh, I and I, I am sold on the Matthews. I think they are by far the smoothest, quietest shooting bow you can buy right now. So, I will be going to a Matthews. When do you? I don't know. I'm just oh. mugging. I'm just mugging. Just mean mugging, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be going to the Matthews. Either the Verdicts or the VXR. Uh, I am going to go long, like 31 and a half Woo! ADA. Yeah, I'm going to take a heavier bow, but a longer longer axle to axle okay and i'm gonna i'm gonna start with her at about 60 pounds ease in well just with the shoulder problems i had last yeah, year yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna try and keep uh i mean 
you're still sending arrows at 60 pounds, boy. You're still, oh, yeah. you're, you're, I think at 60 pounds, they're like 400 and some feet per second, 415 or 412. No, 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 no. They're not above 400 feet per second, son. I thought the, ver- maybe it was 80 pounds then. Let's see what the, oh, the fastest, 3, 382? The 382 fastest maybe. bow is APA and they're shooting 380 something, I believe, or 370. High threes for sure. The yeah, I know. I know they're. I know they're shooting really high. I thought no the compound was is above four hundred that I know of. No production compound for hunting. Well, I never said anything about production. <laughs> well, you're not buying a custom. <laughs> you can tune them things up, boy. All right. Uh, let's go to the VXR. It doesn't hurt the dream. I mean, I also shoot a lighter grain broadhead and arrow. I don't. I'm not shooting FMJs. <laughs> No. I don't need to be armor piercing here. <laughs> we can't. Not everybody can afford that, hey? <laughs> exactly. I'm not Cam Haynes yeah. yet. Okay. Well, I think we're going to get the... Uh, Sounds good. IG Live. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody, Thank you for guys tuning for in. tuning in. Thumbs up from me. Gang. She boy. Gang. Um, I'm just going to wave it. Okay. Three, 343 out of the box is what they're saying. Okay. Uh, now, usually I think that's based on a 50 or 60 pound draw. Oh, hang on. Myron, oh. my buddy Myron just joined. All right. So we'll shout him out and then we're going to end this thing. Myron. Oh, Myron Dirksen? Yep. Hey, what up? I know what? who he is. I don't really know him that well. But if you got some extra, I could use some right here. Peace out, bro. Oh, no, I want to, I want to share that to my story. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We doing it. We doing it. Is okay. That, is that Dudley Silver? No, it's who's silver? K or taxidermy? Oh, it's a nice silver. It is. Uh yeah. So three forty three out of the box is basically. Well, that's a pretty quick bow. That's a pretty quick bow. It's respectable. For that's, sure. That's no slouch. No. Nah. And that's a thirty one and thirty one point five ATA as well. Okay. Which. Will be slower than what the shorter axle to axle will be. Shorter the axle to axle, the faster the bow. Right. Uh, the less forgiving it is, but the faster. Which I think we've realized or we've learned over the years that a faster bow doesn't always mean a better bow. It's all about stopping power. This is what I got from Roger. Yeah, it is about stopping power and energy. Um, kinetic energy. Kinetic is that Knob energy. Creek? I don't know. Let's I feel see. like that's 90. Other way to be. Looked like he was drinking that Knob Creek. Could be. That could very well be. Well, Roger, what are you drinking? You drinking that Knob Creek? That BC hitter? Let us know. Let us know. Let it, let, I got Dirty Creek. I got that club. Now you're drinking that poor man's whiskey tonight. Yeah, you're telling me. Yeah. Well, but you like it. I and don't it's mind it. Cheaper on the bank account, boy. <laughs> yeah. Did I tell you I just bought three bottles of whiskey? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I stocked up. Yeah. It was on sale though. So yeah. saved nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how Woo! I don't know how in my brain that Gotta tells have me. to start buying in Texas. Is... You know the thing is, I got that I got that co op hitter. That co op check, right? Right. So uh it was What was your check? 176 that was 168 gang boy gang. we're taking co-op for a ride Woo! we do win it we spending them dollars we there. dollar bills yo um but yeah so i was like ah may as well i guess a co-op header i used part of that for this microphone i didn't even have mine in my hand yet neither did i but i put it on the card <laughs> cha-ching that reminds me, I'm gonna buy. Let's buy another set of these. I yeah, guess. Yeah, I'm. I'm totally in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's. I think with COVID, the order. shipping is gonna be longer, drastically longer. I don't know. I looked into it because I ordered my. No, I looked into it and it was like a month. Oh, was it? Yeah. Because I ordered my parts last week and they arrived today. No, it doesn't. Like not everything. No, but, but certain these, things. Unless if they're just stored somewhere else right now. Well, see, all my stuff came from the states. So, but it came pretty Maybe quick. these microphones are stored like in China because I bought, I think I bought the last two that they had per se in, in stock. In stock, yeah. So they might be in China or something, right? So, yeah. 
No, I'm, so it might, I'm totally... might not even matter with COVID. I don't know. Who knows? It's just Amazon getting lazy. I guess, <laughs> huh? I got, that, I got that. I got that free Prime account for now. I gotta cancel that real soon. Yeah. Well, you, you watch, be, do you watch Jack Ryan at least? I, yeah. And do you like it? I do like it. And Is it hard to watch John Krasinski in a role other than Jim? Because you know, I he definitely pulls some Jim in there. Does he? See, because I. But that's just his character. Yeah, I think and, though. And thirteen hours, he doesn't really do it. No. Unless it, uh, actually, there's one scene where his contact falls out, where I feel like he was he was Jim more than anything else. But. Then again, that's just John Krasinski, I guess. That's him being a person, yeah. And like listening to the Office Ladies podcast, you get to learn that that's actually how G- or John Krasinski is. Yeah. Like, he's a goofy guy. Which I dig. I love it. Shout out to the Office Ladies. <laughs> Shout out to, to what is, how, does Theo say it? how does Theo say it in the one ad? Jam and Pam. <laughs> Jack, yeah, yeah, but shout out to, shout out to uh, Jenna Fisher and Angela uh, Kinsey. Angela Kinsey. Kinsey, Kin- Kinsey, 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 Kinsey. Yeah, whatever. Same shit. It's a good, that's but a good also uh, Jenna Fisher. Mm. Hey, g- <clears throat> let, me, let me rephrase hey. that. That <clears throat> Jenna Fisher. Jenna Fisher. That Jenna Fisher. <sighs> that just sounds like ah. That uh, sounds like the link. That sounds like I was maybe at an adult, an adult establishment and don't know how to feel about that. Uh, Concludals. Uh, shower thoughts. Shower thoughts. Uh, I'm excited for these uh, e-licensing. Yeah, I'm excited for the draw. I'm excited for these e-licensing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Your English is suffering it's, today. It's prime. Uh, no, I'm 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 looking forward to trying this thing out, and I'm just hoping that COVID goes away soon. Yeah, That's me too. I got. Let's get back to normal life. Yeah. Take care of yourselves more now more than ever. Yeah. Be good to yourselves. You probably deserve it, as Theo would say. That's. That's his quote, not yeah. mine. But also, it fits well here. It does. Because we do care about our listeners. Yeah, we do. Shout out Greatly. to all of you guys. Thank you for listening. And uh, we look forward to producing more content. Sorry, burp, more content, more cool stuff. Where can they find you? Uh, Bushmaster25. And? That's it. Flatlands Feeling File? Oh, yeah. Well, th- this is Flatlands Feeling I'm just file. saying. Shout it out. What if they didn't you know can, it was an Instagram find, page? You can find the podcast on Flatlands Field and Foul. Just Google it, actually. You can also find them on Instagram at Flatlands Field and Foul. Yeah, and Bushmaster25. And 25. Where can they find you? At T Freeze 3130. T Freeze 31. Uh, so yeah, T- I got to tighten it up. I don't know my own Instagram so handle. T E E F R E E Z E 31. At, yeah. At, at that. So that that's at, on Instagrams. So you can also find at me that. at Tall Oak Pursuit 18, um, which I'm not on very often, but you can find me there if you'd like. Uh, give us some, uh, some... Give us some material to talk about. Some feedback. Yeah, what do you guys want to hear? I know we say it all the time, but we want to hear back from you guys. Because nobody ever hits us up. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> that's also true. Um, Except for my cousin Zach and your cousin John, right? Yeah. Well, basically, uh, well, I'm Playman, right? Right. We can't forget about OG Playman. OG, that OG hit. Dang huh? boy, he's been with us from the start, day one, ride or die, boy. Shout out to him. All right. Keep fit. Have fun. Finish your ribbons, kids. Do the damn thing. <laughs>